Investigators have been confused by the unsettling and unexplained circumstances surrounding Elisa Lam's death, which has spawned a great deal of conspiracy theory. The Canadian tourist, age 21, was discovered dead in a water tank on the top of the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles in 2013. There were no indications of trauma or malicious intent, thus the cause of her death is still unknown. Security camera footage of Elisa acting oddly in an elevator at the hotel moments before she vanished adds to the unsettling tone of the case. She's acting strange and inconsistent, like she's hiding from someone or something. Several theories concerning what happened to Elisa have been investigated, including murder, suicide, and possibly paranormal activity. She may have been the victim of a local serial killer, as some have claimed. Others think a government plan or a supernatural force was responsible for her death. This story centers on an unnamed woman who looks to be experiencing depression after giving birth. Her husband, a doctor, places her in a nursery room of a leased home for several weeks as part of a rest cure that has been prescribed. The protagonist is disturbed by the room's weird, twisted pattern on the yellow wallpaper. The woman stays in the room longer and longer, her attention centered on the wall covering. The wallpaper design starts to resemble a figure trapped behind it, and she starts to believe that it moves and changes at night. She ceases interacting with the outer world as a result of her fascination with the wallpaper, the woman's condition deteriorates rapidly, and she becomes convinced that the only way to help the trapped figure behind the wallpaper is to tear it down. In the story's climactic scene, she locks herself in the room and rips off the wallpaper, revealing that the figure she saw was actually herself, trapped in the pattern. Doctor Who was being broadcast on a Chicago television station in 1987 when all of a sudden, the picture vanished. A man wearing a Max Headroom mask took the place of the image and started making odd and disturbing remarks. Just over a minute of the pirate broadcast was followed by the return of regular programming. The FCC and FBI conducted an investigation, but no one has ever been able find out who was wearing the Max Headroom mask. Given that the attacker would have needed access to expensive broadcasting equipment to pull it done, the broadcast hijack was a daring and outrageous attempt. The Max Headroom incident continues to rank among the creepiest and most mysterious events in television history. The Diet Law Pass incident, in February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out for a trek in the Ural Mountains of Russia. The group, led by Igor Dyatlov, were all experienced and had completed many such expeditions before. However, they never made it back from this one. Weeks later, their tent was discovered in tatters and the hikers were found dead in various states of undress, scattered around the surrounding area. The circumstances of their deaths were shrouded in mystery. Their tent appeared to have been cut open from the inside, and some of the bodies showed signs of a force that could not be explained. For example, one hiker had a fractured skull but no external injuries, leading to speculations about what could have caused the damage. Conspiracy theories and hypotheses about the cause of their deaths still abound to this day. The Hinterkaifeck murders was a horrifying and cryptic crime that took place in 1922. A pickaxe was used to brutally murder a family of six who lived on a farm in Germany, the murderer was never identified. Strange things that happened before the murders suggest the possibility that the family was being observed by an unidentified person. The father, Andreas Gruber, claimed to have found footprints in the snow leading to the house that had vanished without a trace and heard unusual footsteps in the attic. The family also received a number of mysterious letters, and Gruber discovered an unattended newspaper inside the home. When neighbors went to look into the disappearance of the family after several days, they found the bodies. They found the bodies of Andreas, his wife, their daughter, and their granddaughter in the barn. The bodies of their maid and their son were found inside the house. The mysterious Oakville blobs were a phenomenon that appeared over the Washington town of Oakville in 1994. Small gelatinous blobs covered the town and its citizens on a cloudy August day. At first, many assumed the blobs were simply jellyfish or some sort of algae, but soon, the townspeople began to become ill in large numbers. People described flu-like symptoms as tiredness, aches in their muscles, and vomiting. 
The local authorities didn't take the incident seriously despite the citizens' worries, and no investigation was opened. Independent researchers soon discovered that the blobs actually included human white blood cells, despite the fact that the substance was originally believed to be a bacterial slime mold, the Oakville blobs continue to be a mystery to this day, with no definitive explanation for their origin. On a lovely June day, the 300 citizens of the village gathered in the square as they had done for ages. The person in charge of the lottery, Mr. Summers, showed there with a black box. Knowing what was in the box, the villagers greeted him with a mixture of respect and concern. When Mr. Summers opened the box, he saw name-written pieces of paper. There was anxiety in the air as the peasants drew their slips of paper. Nobody wished to be the selected one who would be killed by being beaten. Tessie Hutchinson, the winner, objected that the lottery wasn't fair when she heard the news. The punishment started when the other villagers refused to pay attention. As Tessie was pelted with rocks, she cried out for mercy, but no one came to her aid. The other villagers watched in silence, knowing that this was the price they had to pay for their prosperity. After the stoning was over, the villagers went home as if nothing had happened, but they couldn't forget the horror of what they had just witnessed. The ghost ship Mary Celeste is a true story that has baffled people for over a century. The Mary Celeste's crew dissolved into nothingness in 1872 as it was making its way from New York to Italy. There was no indication of a struggle or an explanation for their disappearance when the ship was discovered abandoned in the Atlantic Ocean. The lifeboat wasn't there when the ship was found, but the sails were up and the cargo was undamaged. There was still food and water in the galley, as well as the crew's valuables and personal goods. The crew, however, was not to be found. Many various theories about what might have happened to the crew have been proposed, such as piracy, rebellion, or even an attack by a gigantic octopus. However, nobody is sure of what exactly happened to the Mary Celeste's crew. The Tunguska event, on June 30, 1908, something incredible happened in the skies over Siberia. An explosion occurred that was estimated to be 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. The explosion caused trees to be flattened and buildings to shake, but no crater was ever found. To this day, no one knows exactly what caused the Tunguska event. Some theories include a meteorite impact, a comet explosion, or even the crash of an extraterrestrial spacecraft. The Voynich Manuscript is a 240-page book filled with unique artwork and text written in an unknown language or code. Despite countless efforts by academics over 500 years, nobody has been able to decipher its meaning or determine who wrote it. Some believe it's a hoax or an alien message, while others think it's medieval medical or scientific literature. The book features illustrations of plants, astronomical symbols, and even naked women in bathtubs, with some text written in a strange system of symbols and shapes. Despite examination by linguists, computer scientists, and cryptographers, the code remains unsolved. Some even believe the manuscript is cursed, with reports of negative consequences for those who have read it. The Voynich manuscript remains one of the most fascinating and enigmatic artifacts in human history, captivating the interest of both academics and the public. The Dancing Plague of 1518 is a strange and fascinating event that occurred in Strasbourg, France. In July of that year and soon hundreds of others joined her dancing for days on end. Even as their feet bled and they passed out from tiredness, they were unable to stop. Doctors and local officials struggled to explain the phenomenon. Some even held the belief that supernatural forces were to blame. Nothing seemed to come the dancers down, even though they were taken to a nearby shrine to pray, and musicians were brought in to perform calming music with the hope of calming them down, but nothing seemed to. After several weeks, the dancing finally came to an end with some dancers dying from exhaustion and others simply collapsing from the strain on their bodies. The dance plague is still a mystery to this day. Although ideas range from mass hysteria to rugged poisoning of fungus that grows on wheat, cause hallucinations and spasms as possible explanations. The disappearance of the Sauter children, in 1945, a fire destroyed the home of the Sauter family in West Virginia, killing five of their children. Or did it? The Sauters never believed that their children had died in the fire, as they found no evidence of their remains in the rubble. 
They launched their own investigation and found multiple inconsistencies in the official report, leading them to suspect foul play. One strange detail was that a man had been seen stealing a ladder from the Sodder property on the night of the fire, and there were also reports of a car parked nearby. The Sodders hired a private investigator who discovered that the man stealing the ladder was an acquaintance of the local fire chief, who had refused to send a fire truck to the Sodders house that night. The private investigator also found a woman who claimed to have seen the missing children in a car driving away from the Sodder property on the night of the fire. The Sodders never gave up their search for their children and even placed a billboard on the site of their former home with pictures of their missing kids and a plea for information. Over the years, the case has generated numerous theories, including that the children were taken by the Sicilian Mafia because of a grudge against the Sodders or that they were abducted by a cult. However, despite their efforts, the Sodders never discovered what really happened to their children, and the case remains unsolved to this day. The Sodder children are still listed as missing and their story serves as a haunting reminder of the mysteries that can still exist even in the modern world.